Hey, welcome back. We remain outside of the courtroom for our final conversation that has much to do with the trial, but more to do with all the parts of us that this trial touches. The conversations about race and reform to our systems here and all over this country. So here is Kent beginning the first of many of these talks with Dr. Yahuru Williams. My name is Yahuru Williams. I'm a professor of history and founding director of the Racial Justice Initiative at the University of St. Thomas. When it comes to the trial, will you be watching every day? I will be. In fact, I watched the opening statements this morning, and I think it's important that everybody do that. And it's important to relive some of those moments from last year. It's important to look at that video. It's important to be back in that space so we don't forget the wound that we all suffered as a community, as a nation. Minnesota right now, uh, the Twin Cities, we're ground zero in a national conversation, in fact, a global conversation about uh, racial justice. And that's important, and it's going to mark our future, not just in terms of the trial, but also in terms of the trail, what we leave behind in the aftermath of this moment. Today's an important day in court, opening statements. If you had to think about what your opening statement would be on a day like today, what do you think it would be? My message for people today is, don't forget that justice and equity go hand in hand. We have a tremendous opportunity in this country to reimagine um, the way that we engage with one another. Most people are thinking about this as the trial of Derek Chauvin, but this is also the trial of this community. And ultimately, the verdict for us will be what we look back in 10 years and say about ourselves and how we've grown or haven't grown in that time. So if there's a conviction in this case, but we don't change in five to 10 years? For me, I think it's a failure, it would be a failure, if people assume, no matter what the outcome, that this is it. And that in a few months, um, or however long this takes, you know, this is the final statement about what happened last May. And I think part of the problem is that racial fatigue sets in. People saying, you know, I'm tired of the churn, and I, I just want things to go back to normal. But the reality is that the problem was, normal made people like George Floyd invisible. And we can't afford for human beings to be invisible in our criminal justice system. We can't afford for that in our educational system. We can't afford uh, that in, in housing or other areas where we see racial disparity. It's an opportunity for us really to see our neighbors and to embrace what it means to ultimately be human. We have to start thinking in terms of how to build a community. What advice would you give people when it comes to understanding that or trying to be part of that? Every step matters. Every um, contribution that people make, um, whether it be reading to your children for educating yourself about systemic just injustice, um, taking steps to volunteer. There's no magic solution here. and It'll be a thousand acts of kindness, a thousand points of light that'll move us back in the direction of a just and equitable community. Now, speaking of those steps, Professor Williams has taken steps of his own to lead by example. Now, to catch you up, just a year ago, he was on the verge of moving out of this area to take a job in New York. But then after George Floyd, he redoubled his efforts right here. He said instead of looking at this time and this trial in a fearful way, he sees hope and an opportunity to change the future. And speaking of the future, Dr. Williams always talks 10 steps down the line, which is what's so interesting and what many can learn from him. Is Dr. Williams worried about what happens in the immediate aftermath of this trial? Well, he is a little bit, Jenny. He said you've seen already what happened from last summer to now and the ebb and flow of that dialogue and that slowing down. And he's worried about that after the trial ends. He said that he hopes that that can change and he'll see if that investment and that dialogue continues and that's how he'll judge this. All right, that makes sense. Thanks so much for bringing us that conversation with Dr. Williams Kent. We'll be right back.